The USO, until everyone comes home. Welcome to the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. This is just one of over a thousand college basketball games on ESPN3.com. It's Pittsburgh against the University of Illinois Chicago, and along with former Panther great Curtis Aiken, I'm John Sanders. Curtis scored over a thousand points in his career, but your alma mater, rather aggressive scheduling this year. Yeah, very aggressive in a very tough game the other day against Rhode Island. Scared the Pitt Panthers a little bit, but Jamie Dixon has done a great job of preparing his team early. Let's talk about our Star Watch players for tonight. Start with Gibbs of the Panthers. Well, there's no bigger star in the Pitt Panthers than Gibbs. As his game has really evolved over the last year or two. Was known as just a jump shooter. Is now starting to get in the lane and create opportunities for other guys. Big time player. Well, he's a first team Big East preseason all conference pick. And here's a second team all conference pick at Robo Krebs for well, UIC. Well, Krebs is a guy that makes his team go. Fifth leading scorer in the, comp in the conference last year. He's also an outstanding jump shooter. You have to be aware of where he is on the court at all times. Let's take a look at starting lineups for this matchup tonight. Kreps, Neely, Burton, Carter, and Williams, the starting five for UIC. For the Panthers, they'll go with Gibbs, Wanamaker, Brown, Zana, and McGee. And it is happy birthday to the head coach of the Pittsburgh Panthers. Jamie Dixon is 45 years old today. Boy, was he got a great job in seven years or what? Outstanding job. And you talk about a birthday present. Probably nothing he'd be, rather do than to be coaching on his birthday. And there's the brand new head coach at UIC. Howard Moore he comes from Wisconsin, brings a lot of that Wisconsin mentality with him. He really does, and he's going to need that Wisconsin mat uh, attitude today, considering his first game as a head coach going up, the, up against the number four team in the country. He has his workout cut out for him tonight, but I expect that he's going to be up for the task. First meeting for UIC against the Panthers and you know, Pittsburgh against the Horizon League, 19 and 11 all time beat Youngstown State in November of a year ago. You know, one of the things, John, that always scares you when you play against a team that's so good like the Pitt Panthers this early, you work all preseason trying to prepare your guys, get their confidence up, and it could be shattered in one game. Well, we'll see what happens. The opening tip winds up in the hands of the Flames and a drive and a miss on the first shot. And pulling down the rebound is Gary McGee. Well, John, that's one of the things you mentioned pulled down by McGee. There's only going to be really one opportunity at the shot, so they're going to have to make sure they get a good shot. Get it out of bounds. Panthers keep it with 21 on the shot clock. What to watch for, Curtis? Well, one of the things I think is very important in terms of uh, the Pitt Panthers, they have to get out in transition. If they're going to continue to play good basketball, they want to utilize their athleticism. They have to get out in transition. On the other hand, UIC, it's important that they get good looks at the basket, execute their offense to perfection. Well, the Panthers made only three three-pointers the entire night against Rhode Island, and they immediately get out with a long two tonight. Well, they had been shooting 50% from three before that game against Rhode Island. Rhode Island did a good job of scouting them and really took away that three-point shot, but they found another opportunity. Quick turnaround ties the ball game up. That's Burton. When you talk about the perimeter game, I didn't really think that they would be able to get much inside. That's UIC against the Pitt Panthers early on. They got a good, good look at a bucket inside. Well, they like to run their offense inside to back outside. Basically, they run four on the perimeter. There's an inside move. And it's going to be an offensive foul. A reach around foul is going to be called on McGee. He'll pick up number one. Well, he did use his offhand to try to get under the basket. But, you know, look at the, how, how much he improved in terms of his agility from a year ago. Never would have been able to attempt a move like that. 2-2 Two -two is our early score just underway tonight on ESPN3.com. Preps with some penetration. A pull-up left-hand jumper is too strong. The rebound brought down by Brown. That's one of the things that the Panthers do so well. As you see a nice inside look to, to McGee from Aspen, but the Panthers do that extremely well. They send five guys to the basket. They look to rebound the basketball and then fast break. Now they are running more this year, too, Curtis, than they have in the past. Well, if you look on that bench and what you see on the floor, those stallions, you want to run. Baseline jumper good. Coming up a career high, matching 
24 points. Wanamaker gets his first two tonight. Well, we talked about how, how good Ashley Gibbs is, but that's another guy that's steady Eddie. Gives it to him every night. Well, I'll tell you what, he's come a long way in the last couple of years. Yeah, as you know, his first year was like a deer with headlights. Yes, and now he's he one of the leaders on the team. Panthers controlling. Have an early two-point lead. This is Wanamaker working with Gibbs. And everything really goes through Wanamaker. Brown, this is a three, and he hits it. Well, you see Jamie Dixon. No one's happier right now than Jamie Dixon because he knows when Brown gets off to a good start, it can be a great night for the Pitt Panthers. Kreps backs away. Neely, they call him Z. Well, U UIC runs what's called a swing offense. They get four guys on the perimeter and try to get a lot of cuts, backdoor, dribble penetration, kicks out the jump shots, John. Just like that, as they tried to go through and run the backdoor play. He brought that offense with him. Did Howard Moore from Wisconsin. And uh, interestingly enough, Bo Ryan, of course, the coach there, and Matt Ryan is the director of operations for this team. Wow. You've done a little homework, John. <laughs> well, I had a chance to talk to all those people. And it's going to be a held ball. And the possession arrow is going to give it to the Panthers. So Pitt will control in an early five-point lead. Well, the one kid, you know, as we have a little break in the action here, John, one kid that stands out on the Pitt Panther, Panther basketball team, and that's Zana. I mean, he has really turned his game up. A red shirt freshman has had some outstanding uh, preseason games, but really played well the other night. Nine points and 11 rebounds. I'm sorry, 11 points and nine rebounds the other night. One rebound away from a double-double. First miss by Brown. Gibbs will shoot a three. That one rims out. Brown has the offensive board in traffic. They'll reset Wanamaker. Three minutes gone in the opening half. And the blocking foul called as Brown was working the baseline. And that's two quick fouls now on Williams. So I think we're going to see Casey Robbins come in here as the big man in the middle for UIC. Well, Brown did a good job of controlling himself. That really could have gone either way had he been a little more aggressive on that play. Panthers lead by five. Brown has it blocked. That the Panthers will keep as the catch was made out of bounds. Good effort that time by Paul Carter. His ball is very long, and uh, obviously with, with Brown being as tall as he is and that kind of elevation on his jump, for him to get a piece of it, he had to be off the floor. Three-pointer is short. There's Brown again. Up, missed, and fouled. So that's three quick fouls on the centers for UIC. Well, we talked about what the UIC had to do on the offensive end, and that was got to take good looks at the basket, execute their offense because they're going to be one and done. On the other end, because they're outsized and outmanned in terms of height, the Pitt Panthers are going to get second and third shot opportunities, as you saw there. Brown off to a great start so far tonight with six early points. Another redshirt senior from Harrisburg. Well, this is a kid that certainly has the talent, but the rap on him is that he doesn't show up every night. At least what I've seen thus far in the, the few preseason games I've saw and the, the actual games that I've saw, he's coming to play from the whistle. Panthers on a 7-0 run right now. And always playing that stifling defense. Almost thrown away, saved by Krebs. Worked his body sideways and a good follow rebound by Burton. Yeah, Burton got a, got a uh, actually was in the right place at the right time. But one of the, one of the things that UIC is going to have to recognize is it's going to be very difficult to beat the Pitt Panthers off the dribble. They got to get a little dribble penetration and look to pass the basketball. And the Flames just one of six shooting so far. This is Wanamaker and Brown. Stripped out of bounds. Panthers will keep it. Knocked away by Krebs. 15.58 remaining here in the opening half. We have our first time out on ESPN3.com, 9-4, Pittsburgh on top. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, when you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights.
Hail to pig. I'm Ed Randall. I'm a survivor of prostate cancer. I'm the ghost of Ed Randall. I'm a victim of prostate cancer. I went to the doctor for my normal visit. I felt fine and got a simple PSA blood test. Because of that, they caught my prostate cancer early, so I get to live and talk about it. I didn't go to the doctor because, well, I felt fine. I never got that simple PSA blood test, so they didn't detect my prostate cancer early. I had no chance to talk about it. I died. So it's up to you. Want to stick around and dance at your granddaughter's wedding? Have a catch with your grandkids? Or sit around and wish you did? Get a simple PSA blood test today. It'll save your life. It saved mine. Pittsburgh. This is part of the 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer. Each of these two teams will play four games in this preseason tournament. And of course, Jamie Dixon in the month of November has only lost one game since he's been here and his birthday is today. Wow, and as I look at the statistics that they put up here, and in fact, to list everything that this guy's accomplished, I don't think the screen is big enough, but the thing that jumps out at me the most is 69% winning percentage in the Big East. That is off the charts. And he has made the NCAA tournament in each year that he's been there. Jamie Dixon was the National Coach of the Year. Jim Phelan, National Coach of the Year. Pittsburgh will go to Madison Square Garden to play a couple more games in the uh, 2K Sports Classic. Meantime, UIC will go to Toledo and play three games. The interesting thing about this format is Wanamaker penetrates, scoops, and scores. So those four games, Curtis, really only count as two as far as the number of games you play in the season. So. Right, right, right. Very, very interesting. Uh, but I tell you what, you talk about Pitt's schedule. They play against Maryland and potentially uh, Texas, depending on who wins, and Illinois. Those are some tough games in the month, the month of November. Panthers crash the boards, then they get on the move. Gibbs pulls up for three and rims out. Zana saves it. Here's Wanamaker. Passes on the three. Bullet pass, so Gibbs will try again. He got that one. Well, for all you young guys out there that's watching this game, you have to realize one of the things about Aston Gibbs, and that should apply to you as well, you only have to remember the next shot, not the last shot. Well, that's a shooter's mentality, isn't it, Curtis? And he's one of the best shooters in pit history. That's the way you thought about it. I know that. <laughs> well, I didn't, see many, I didn't see many shots that I didn't like. I, know that. That. I never saw you see any that you didn't like. <laughs> if you had it, it was going up. Hey, well, I had the green light my senior year, but prior to that, I had to get the ball inside with big guys like Charles Smith and Jerome Lane. And well, you, you played with some decent players, didn't you? Yeah, a few, few decent <laughs> players. And we had a good time, John. You won a lot of basketball games, too. Oh, no question. You talking about some of the great jump shooters of all times. How about Jason Matthews? I mean, that's a guy that can put the ball in the basket. Carter could not get it in, and of course, he is a terrific story because he's got about 50 tickets out for this game tonight. His family is from the Pittsburgh area. Yes, yes. He was at Minnesota, and his sister, Bria, was diagnosed with cancer almost a year ago. She is here. She's doing much better, but it's kind of a family affair for him. Yeah, he yeah. left Minnesota. There is his sister, who is doing much better battling cancer, and he got the okay, but he's already graduated now. He's, uh, he's finished with his college. So he's got the extra year. But there's a kid that has his priorities in place and obviously knows what's important, family, and, and taking care of business in the schools. And uh, what a fitting game. I mean, this game here is a tribute to coaches versus cancer. And we talked about his sister and, and her, uh, her bouts with cancer. And right. We certainly wish him well. Well, he passed on what could have been a final year, maybe a, an NCAA year to go back to Chicago, be close to his sister and his family. Uh, uh, again, there's a young man that understands what's important. So far, Robo Kreps has been very quiet. Credit the Panther defense for that. There's a nice drive and a good finish by Carter. Picks up his first basket of the night. You know, real quick, Kreps is a guy that really doesn't force shots. I mean, he really takes what, you know, what comes to him. He's not a guy that's looking to, to do too much. So uh, I would anticipate that he would heat up a little more the second half. The Panthers are really guarding him tough right now. Wanamaker for three. 
seven now for the senior from Philadelphia. Panthers have their biggest lead of the first half, up 11. Well, you mentioned earlier, John, that he came off his uh, career high, 24 points against uh, Rhode Island, and he really hasn't missed a beat. I mean, he's clicking on all cylinders right now. That's blocked away, picked up by Woodall. He'll lead the Panther break. Putting on the brakes over there is Lamar Patterson. Taylor is in the game right now, along with Moore. So they've gone to some second-line players already. You got four different players from the starters on the court right now. And I tell you what, they're not really—they haven't really lost much. And you know, the kid Dante Taylor's in the ball game now. He's the one that people are really expecting to step his game up, and he's playing well this early uh, so far in the season. Playing right now without Nasir Robinson, who has an ankle problem. Wanamaker decides to shoot. Nine points already for Brad Wanamaker. Certainly one of the most improved players Pitt has ever had. In all aspects of his, of his game. And, you know, I agree with you 100%. I think another guy that falls in that category of one of the most improved players is uh, Sam Young, who obviously was much like Wanamaker as a freshman, didn't really understand the defensive game of Jamie Dixon's system. And now look where uh, Sam Young is in the NBA. And I, I anticipate that this kid will certainly have a good look. Um, at making some team in the NBA. Panthers have scored in eight of their nine possessions so far. So offensively, Curtis, they have come out firing on all cylinders. They have. I think they've also done a good job, John, of recognizing the mismatches. And, you know, Wanamaker right now is oversized against uh, against the, his opponent. And I think they're doing a good job of recognizing mixed matches and kicking the ball out to the right guys. Well, he is off to a terrific start, and even though Gibbs technically is the point guard, this offense runs through Wanamaker. Yeah, right. Technically, he is the point guard, but, you know, Wanamaker handles the ball when Gibbs and Wanamaker are in the game at the same time, probably 75% of the time. Nice, strong up move uh, jump shot by Wanamaker. Able to keep the dribble that time is Neely. Here on the drive is Carter. Gets underneath. No place to go. Just ran out of real estate. Pull-up jumper from the side, too strong. Rebound ripped out of there well, by Dante Taylor. That's a great point, John. He ran out of real estate. You're going to see that against most teams that play against the Panthers because they close out as well as anybody. Three-pointer by Woodall. And the Panthers now already have as many three-pointers in this game as they had the entire night well, they, against Rhode Island. They, they also have much more open looks than they had the other night against Rhode Island. Rhode Island did a great job of uh, defending the jump shooters. That's going to be goaltending, so credit the basket to K.C. Robbins. Well, Coach Moore says we'll take him high, but we can get him right now. Just a tad too late in making the block was Lamar Patterson. Patterson is another guy that's, you know, very uh, uh, agile on the perimeter, can do a number of things with the basketball. He's a great uh, square-up jump shooter, and he's 6'6". We talk about the talent and the, and the versatility of these young Pitt Panthers. The foul is going to go against the Pitt Panthers. It'll be J.J. Moore picking up the foul on the offensive end. Panthers out to a 22-8 lead right now as Kreps set comes back on. He'll take the jersey from Daniel Barnes. You know, something that Kreps is probably not used to seeing. You have. Gilbert Brown at 6'6", guarding him on the perimeter. Very long, very tough to get a shot off of. Here's Kreps. His first field goal attempt misses. Ball tipped out of bounds and right into the Panther bench. It belongs to Pitt. Well, Kreps got an open, open look. I think he was a little too open and surprised and just tried to get rid of that a little too quick. And that was his second shot, not his first. Here's another kid, uh, Woodall, who's really starting to get a feel for the Jamie Dixon system. A little anxious his first year, starting to settle into his role now. Offensive rebound underneath, lost momentarily. Battle along the boards, and stepping out of bounds was Dante Taylor. So that will send it back the other way. 11.48 to play in the half. The Panthers with a 22-8 lead here on ESPN3.com. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. 
Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Pitt. Movies at your fingertips with our new iPhone app. Download now from Apple's App Store or on iTunes. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, when you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. To pick. 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer continues and so far it's been lights out three pointers for Pitt. Well you talked about at the top of the show that well I, I'm sorry before the show that you had a chance to go to the pit shoot around this looks like a pit shoot around out here today not many guys with hands in their faces they're doing a good job of finding jump shooters and it's like practice. Well, Wanamaker makes that one. Gibbs had one. Four different players with a three-pointer in the first half, including off the bench. Number one, Travon Woodall hits a three. Well, these are big-time Big East players, and if you're going to give them that kind of separation, they're going to knock it down every time. And with this depth, Curtis, they just keep coming, don't they? Yeah, it's tough to scout this team. Carter hands it off that time to Neely. It's just Kreps. For UIC, long range jumper no good, tracked down by the Panthers. It's Brown back the other way. UIC picked ninth in the Horizon League in the preseason poll, and that's where they finished last year. That one tipped up and in by McGee. Well, great tip by McGee, right place, right time again, but make or miss, you, you have to appreciate and like the fact that Brown is trying to be aggressive. He is looking for his shot so far tonight. Nine minutes gone in the opening half. Carter comes up short. Rebound by McGee. Lost it. Got it back. Here is Woodall. Panthers will play again on Saturday. And next week they'll be in Madison Square Garden. That's going to be an offensive foul on Woodall. The second offensive foul against the Panthers so far tonight. Well, he certainly over penetrated on that particular play. I think he was anticipating a Carter on the right side. It never happened, and he had to keep the ball and consequently picked up an offensive charge. Darren Williams, who sat for a while with two early fouls, is back on the court as Robbins goes to the bench for the Flames. Oh, nice move and a finish with the right hand by Robo Krebs gets his first basket of the night. Krebs has added a little something to his repertoire. He's not known for a guy that's attacking a basket, but he's not hasn't been able to knock down jump shots, so maybe he's looking to get a little more penetration. Panthers have been on 7-0, 5-0, and 8-0 runs so far, and they lead by 14. Nearing the midway point, first half. Gibbs gets it back to Woodall. They look inside now. McGee, quick turnaround, a little strong, and the rebound pulled down by Williams. Well, Pitt did a good job of running four high, isolating McGee on the inside, just wasn't able to convert. Here's Carter along that baseline, and he's fouled. Foul will go against the Panthers. It'll be Lamar Patterson's first. The Panthers make more changes in their lineup. More changes, but no drop-offs. No, not really. Alib Zana played high school ball in Maryland, but he's from Nigeria. That's going to go against Carter. Trying so hard. Now five different Panther players have one foul early on. And you know Carter wants to succeed in this building. Yes, no question. And you see Woodall come over and return the favor and picked up the offensive foul on the other end. That was the first turnover by UIC tonight so it's four to one difference as the Panthers are trying to push it more than maybe they're known I think Curtis over the recent years of playing half court 
there, there's no question, and that's that's what makes this team so effective, John, is that they can really beat you in both both areas. That's a half court game. They execute their offense as well as any team in the country, which is their trademark. But now with the type of talent that they have, that these guys that can fill a lane and finish on the fast breaks as well as they can, you have to look to push the basketball. Ashton Gibbs to the foul line. Scored almost 16 points a game last year. Of course, the only real player that they're missing, we mentioned the injury problems for Nasir Robinson, who had been starting. But Jermaine Dixon is really the only main player they lost from last year. Yeah, and uh, you talk about Ashton Gibbs as you look at, uh, at Nasir Robinson, who's an outstanding player in his own right. But we have some players, very talented players on this Pitt basketball team. Pull up jumper. Strong, there's McGee going high for the rebound. You're right, Curtis. It's been one and done, hasn't it? It really has been, and uh, the Panthers are now starting to look to, to push the ball after rebounding the basketball. They typically look to push the ball after free throw shots and steals, but they're looking to work on their uh, transition game early on. Preps the rebound of the Brown miss, goes to the drive again and draws a foul. And a little bit of frustration there for Gilbert Brown as he'll pick up his first foul. Did a pretty good job the last couple of times of getting into the lane and trying to create opportunities for himself. As you see Brown follow him there, there's a two shot opportunity from the free throw line. But prior to that, the excellent move against Gibbs to get to the basket and finish. A miss at the line for a guy who was number 16 in the country in scoring a year ago. 26 10. Panthers have matched their biggest lead in the opening half. One out of two. Just three early points for the guy who scored over 15 a game last year. Well, I anticipate that he will start to heat up. You know, sometimes you're a little intimidated when you play against a team of this talent. You know, I mentioned the Pittsburgh schedule. We talked about it. Wanamaker kicks it to Brown. They get it back inside now. McGee. Here comes Krebs. The Panthers played an exhibition game. Six eleven. Panthers started out hitting eight of their first ten. You knew that wasn't going to continue, Curtis. They're one for their last nine. Yeah, but they're not going to stop shooting. I mean, no. Kermit and guys, they can stick. To, they can stick the jump shot. And uh, Wanamaker is, is obviously improved in that area. And Brown is really improved in that area as he attacks the basket and finishes. Brown on a drive, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. foul <laughs> he didn't have much on that play and Brown definitely bailed him out uh, by following him because he was turning to shoot the basketball and he was in a bad position and uh, it was been a tough shot inside eight minutes left in the opening half Panthers have their biggest lead at 28 to 11 here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh life an everyday miracle of survival Today, the future of all life on Earth hangs in the balance. What happens next depends on us. Well, open up your mind and see like me. Open up your plans and damn you're free. I look into your heart and you'll find love, 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 love. Listen to the music of the moment people dance and sing. We're just one big family. I look into your heart.
Welcome back. 28-11 is our score with 7.56 to play, and let's talk a little more about a great start tonight for Gilbert Brown. Well, Gilbert Brown is showing you his versatility. We saw him attack the basket a moment ago, but now he's showing you that he's also improved on this perimeter game as you see him knock down a couple of three-point shots there, John. Well, the Panthers have missed 12 shots, but they have nine offensive rebounds, so that is part of the size advantage that you talked about. And the numbers for Gilbert. He also has two personal fouls, and that may be the reason he's on the bench as Carter goes to the free throw line. It's a pair, does the left hand shooting senior. Well, at 6'8, I mean, he really has a nice touch, left handed. You know, can really get his shot off at any time, but Brown and, and the other long pit Panthers have done a good job of defending Carter. And you see on our stat track the big difference in shooting. It's been a huge edge for the Panthers, and this rebound is dug out of there by the Flames. That's a three pointer, another left hand shooter, and it was a left hander shooting three pointers that kept Rhode Island in that game the other night. Yeah, it was, and uh, that almost gave Coach Dixon nightmares, but that was really one of the first open looks that uh, UIC had gotten of the game so far. Wanamaker feeds it into the corner, mm -hmm. but not able to hang on as J.J. Moore it goes out of bounds. So it is basketball back to UIC. Twenty eight sixteen seven eighteen to play in the half. A little bit of a run right now by UIC. The Flames have scored the last five trying to battle back from an early deficit. Carter in the lane goes to the right hand and Patterson has the rebound. Pull up from the side rattles home. Good finish by J.J. Moore gets his first two. Well, J.J. Moore's first two of the season, I might add, but he is the guy that is probably the most athletic, uh, exciting players on the Pitt Panthers team. I mean, usually the guy that had that that title was Brown, but I tell you what, this J.J. Moore is the real deal, particularly in transition. Well, he got inside, but battling their way back, and that's going to be foul number three on Darren Williams. I'm John Sanders along with Curtis Aiken. Glad to have you with us tonight on ESPN3.com. It's about a thousand or so basketball games coming up. Part of the ESPN family of networks. And it's an early bench time for Williams, who's got three fouls. For well, Williams, it did, it actually did a pretty good job on McGee inside and you know, forced McGee to take a couple tough shots. But uh, you know, McGee is certainly outsized. I mean, he's certainly the bigger player in terms of size on the court now with him on the bench. Robbins has the rebound. Back come the Flames. Playing without Kreps right now. He's gotten off to a slow start. He's on the bench. The, the Panthers are doing a really good job of keeping UIC out of sync. They don't seem to be in much of a flow offensively. The big guys are doing a good job as you saw McGee come out and heads. And just really throwing them off the rhythm. Nice turnaround shot that time by Robbins, his second field goal. That's the lead to 12. It's been as many as 17 here in the half. We're inside six minutes remaining in the 2K Sports Classic that benefits coaches versus cancer. Game two for Pittsburgh in that event, and that's from the corner is a nice three-pointer. Gibbs gets his second tray, and he's got eight. Well, if he gets an open look like that, you can just put it in the books. Textbook jump shot. Neely back outside, beats Barnes, and they go down low. That's going to be an offensive foul, the second on Carter. <laughs> Carter looks surprised, but I think he understands that uh, he got caught on that particular play. Well, it happened earlier in the ball game to McGee, and it happens to Carter. He'll take a seat with two fouls as Kreps checks back in. And of course, what you lose with that change is some size. Yeah, very much so. Speaking of size, you know, with this lineup in the ball game, you know, Dante Taylor, who's really a power forward, is happening forced to play the center spot. This is Wanamaker. Kreps out on him. Gibbs 
will stop, pop, and dribble. Has he ever saw a shot that he didn't like? That's his third three-pointer. He has 11 so far tonight, and the lead is up to 18. Makes it look so easy. Well, you just give him a quick look, and he's there. Good move inside by Robbins. He's got six. A little up and under. Panthers have been up by as many as 18. We're inside five minutes left in the opening half. Glad to have you with us here at the Peterson Event Center. Beautiful building, Curtis. Hey, it's good to be with you, John. It's been some time, right? It has been some time, yes. Good rebound by Robbins. We'll start it back the other way. You talk about the building, John. One of the, certainly one of the best in the country. Well, when your team is 133 and 11 at home, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good building. Jamie Dixon has lost one game in the month of November. His birthday month, he is 45 tonight. Sweeping hook rattles in. They see them giving him a little, a little in and out in, 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 the, in the paint there. It's the third time in a row they went inside. They may have found something. Four minutes to go in the opening half. Coach Dixon is going to go look to get McGee back in the game. He was Wanamaker on a drive, and he tried to set up a teammate. And the result is a foul. Robbins It'll be a one and one. He's certainly dominating inside, but Coach Dixon don't like to play a player when he has two fouls. He may have to go back to McGee to stop Robbins inside. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, When you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. Hail to pick. We love the movies, but Rob was always nervous about getting in. Now he's a new man. Thanks, Catherine, but... So tell him, Rob. Well, I've been using Fandango to print our tickets at home. You see, even when I think about it, I feel... Hot. Isn't he hot? Thank you, baby. I love it when he's assertive. Here you are, my friend. Dude, you are sizzling. Skip the box office. Print tickets at home and go straight to the ticket taker. That's what I'm talking about. Every Sunday night, the Comcast Network helps you make sense of the world around you. At 8, Robert Trenum brings you conversation and debate from the left, right, and center on Roll Call TV. At 8.30, tough questions, real answers. You choose who's right on It's Your Call with Lynn Doyle. At 9, entertaining and informative, Art Finnell reports. And at 9.30, join legendary reporter Larry Kane as he breaks down the world we know on Voice of Reason. Every Sunday night starting at 8 on the Comcast Network. Welcome back to Pittsburgh on ESPN3.com. We talked about it in our Star Watch. Ashton Gibbs, preseason first teamer in the Big East Conference, and he is not disappointed so far tonight. Not at all, but if you coach more, I'm sure during that timeout you were talking about guarding the perimeter jump shooters, and Ashton Gibbs right now is just having a field day, and if you don't get out and contest him, he's going to knock that down all night, John. He has hit three three-pointers so far this evening. Still 354 remaining in the opening half. Gibbs with 11 and three assists. Wanamaker has nine. Brown has nine. They have really spread the wealth so far here in the first half. Taylor to the free throw line. Yeah, you talk about spreading the wealth. That's one of the reasons why this team is ranked number four in the nation because they are a good basketball team. Very unselfish. They try to get everyone involved in the game. And as you look at their stats at the end of the game, more often than not, three or four players are in double figures because they share the basketball so well. One out of two at the line for Taylor. The rebound to Robbins. Back come the Flames. Under brand new head coach Howard Moore. I talked to him today. I said, how is it to come here after the kind of talent you had at Wisconsin? He said, well, it's different, obviously. But you have to get them to buy into your program and your ideas. And he said that takes some doing. Well, he certainly have a, a great resume as a young coach, and uh, I anticipate that they're going to have a good season in the Horizon Conference, but more importantly, I think they'll be making a tournament real soon. Shot clock at five, and they throw it away right into the hands of Woodall. 
Wanamaker puts it back inside to the dump by Taylor. That's very unselfish right there. It, it really is very unselfish, and that's one of the things that they have to get from this kid. He has to run the floor more and look to be aggressive as you saw him finish on that slam dunk. That's a long three-pointer, the second for Barnes. He's got six. Now, this is the kind of team, if you keep running, you give the ball up, you're probably going to get it back, right? <laughs> yeah, there's no question yeah. about that. I mean, if you're a big guy, you want to get out on a fast break. Patterson to Wanamaker on the perimeter. Sonich set the check back in for Pittsburgh. Here's Gibbs down the lane, pulls up, soft jumper good. Talked about at the top of the show, the versatility and how he has improved his ball game. Wasn't a very good ball handler in the past. Now he's able to get into the lane and create opportunities for himself rather than just coming off picks. J.J. Richardson also set to check in for Pittsburgh. Panthers have stretched it out to 45, 41, 25. Ball out of bounds. Timeout. And the timeout is called by the University of Illinois, Chicago. The UIC down 41, 25. They've trailed by as many as 18 here in the first half. But the Panthers so far, Curtis, have come out strong. And I think, what is it for a team to play this many games early in the season the way they've had to. I mean, this is three games in the first week of the season. It, it, it is. I think one of the helped them, they went over to Ireland this year, so they really haven't. I mean, this team has been a close-knit team. They've been playing a lot of basketball over the summer. The Pro-Am basketball lead out in the dream, dream Tree. These guys are playing tough competition all year, so they're accustomed to playing tough teams. However, these Pitt fan, Pitt fans aren't accustomed to seeing play tough teams this early. Well, you see the combination of Wanamaker and Gibbs, what they did against on Monday, and they're at it again tonight. Gibbs with 13. Wanamaker has nine. Gilbert Brown has also chipped in nine points. Kreps has it in the corner. They have really hounded him in the first half. With the left hand, that time goes Robbins. He's in double figures with 10. Well, Robbins has been the answer for this uh, UIC team early in the ball game. I, I would think that the Pitt Panthers are now going to start to pinch down on him, double down, and make other guys beat you from the perimeter. Three. No good. Ball out of bounds. He'll stay at this end. You know, it was a missed shot by Woodall, but one of the things that have to be frustrated for Coach Moore is every shot that the Pitt, Pitt Panthers are taking are uncontested. Well, that's part of the defensive mentality that he has to ins There's another. instill in his players. There's Wanamaker had the rebound on the loose side. And Robbins now with eight of the last 11 points for the Flames, and they'll get the basketball back with a minute 48 to play in the half. Thanks for joining us tonight. The season just beginning here on ESPN3.com. UIC hasn't deviated from their game plan. They're still in that swing offense. With four perimeter guys trying to look to take advantage off the dribble penetration. Here's Kreps on a drive. Bending, bending off. No good. The rebound pulled down inside by Zana. Nice move. Wasn't able to get the roll. Woodall flashing back to the other end. Barnes will reset to Kreps. That's Bush off the bench. There's the guy that's been the offense in this first half. Hey, that's a dozen go. for KC Robbins down low. Hey, go to the well until it dries out, baby. Well, that's going to bring McGee to back into the lineup. So Robbins has done a job now with 10 of the last 13 points. Well, KC's been the answer so far, as you just mentioned, but you got to give UIC credit. They recognize that they, they have something there. They've been going to them. There are his numbers from a year ago. And obviously he's going to have to play a lot tonight because Darren Williams, who got the start at center, is on the bench with three fouls. Let's take a look at the big man in the middle. Okay, Casey Robbins has done it in a number of different ways. A little up and under over the right and over the left shoulder. A uh, little hook shot there. I mean, he's, he's done it inside the last few trips down. The Panther has to find the answer against Robbins. Well, he's found a soft rim at that end of the court, hasn't he? Hey, whatever works, right? He's been bouncing him around and in, 41-29, heading to the final minute of the opening half. Panthers have led throughout. They were tied at two, and then fit one on a 7-0 run. And 
for the most part, they have been in control. Drive by Wanamaker. He's got 11. Nice, solid, strong move to the basket. Dribbling with his head up. For you young guys, you always got to have your head up. As you saw there, he was able to finish, but he still had other opportunities if someone was to cut to the lane because he had his head up. And no place to go. Shot clock down to 10. We're in the final 20 seconds. Kreps. Stop and go move. Gets inside, dumps it down. Good heads up play by Wanamaker. Didn't have the numbers. Pull out for the last shot with eight seconds to go on the ball game. I'm sorry, the first half. <laughs> Three is on the way at the buzzer. No good. Uh, they will head to the locker room with the Panthers on top. 43 to 29. Pitt at one point had a an 18 point lead, but led by the play of KC Robbins, they got back in it. But Wanamaker Gibbs, you see them head to the locker room. They have been very positive in front of the Oakland Zoo here in Pittsburgh. 43 29 is our halftime score. We will begin our halftime activities right after this on ESPN3.com. Jimmy. Seeking solutions with Suzanne. Inspiring. Insightful. Revealing. This week, learn specific diet choices that may aid in cancer recovery. I really feel that my nutrition helped me to withstand those strong treatments. And whip up some heart-healthy recipes from the American Heart Association. Get ready for the next phase of your life. Seeking Solutions with Suzanne, Sunday, November 14th at 7.30 p.m., exclusively on the Comcast Network. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Pitt. Every Sunday night, the Comcast Network helps you make sense of the world around you. At 8, Robert Trenum brings you conversation and debate from the left, right, and center on Roll Call TV. At 8.30, tough questions, real answers. You choose who's right on It's Your Call with Lynn Doyle. At 9, entertaining and informative, Art Finnell reports. And at 9.30, join legendary reporter Larry King as he breaks down the world we know on Voice of Reason. Every Sunday night starting at 8 on the Comcast Network. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center. I'm John Sanders along with Curtis Aiken. This game tonight is exclusive to ESPN3.com and it's just the start of about a thousand basketball <laughs> games on ESPN3.com. Look ahead to ones coming up, for example, on Friday. Well, a thousand good games, I might add, and the game that jumps out at me the most, uh, John, and that's the Bucknell-Villanova game, but, you know, every year, West Virginia does a great job of putting together a good team. I think they're going to be very good this year, and as you know, Ohio State is always tough. And that Friday schedule has both the men's and the women's programs from West Virginia on. Now, let's take a look ahead to what's coming up on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. A little bit of number 24, Wisconsin, huh? Oh, yes, and uh, not only Wisconsin, and, and speaking of Wisconsin, their coach, uh, Coach Moore, played at Wisconsin, but, you know, there's some great top 25 teams that's going to be playing on, on this network, and I'm excited about watching them as well. Of course, Syracuse, Georgetown, representing the Big East, as always. And everybody trying to catch up with the University of Pittsburgh because they will have played by Saturday three basketball games already this year. Well, not only three basketball games, but I might add three tough basketball games. You know, I had an opportunity to watch them against the Rhode Island uh, team the other night. And uh, I tell you what, uh, Leroy James is a player and uh, he scared Pitt and all the Pitt uh, hopeful, uh, all the Pitt fans here. And uh, it was a great game. And I, I tell you what. This Pitt basketball team is a real deal. Number five team in the country, and they deserve the ranking. Well, the Flames and the Panthers are at halftime. We have 20 minutes in the books so far here on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. A lot more to come. We're going to continue with our halftime report for some Big East news looking ahead to the season. We will be back at the Peterson Event Center with more right after this. When you build on a strong foundation, 
when you are among the brightest and the best. When you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. Hail to pick. You're the best. We're never stressed. For tickets, baby. Get movies at your fingertips with our new iPhone app. Download now from Apple's App Store or on iTunes. I'm Ed Randall. I'm a survivor of prostate cancer. I'm the ghost of Ed Randall. I'm a victim of prostate cancer. I went to the doctor for my normal visit. I felt fine and got a simple PSA blood test. Because of that, they caught my prostate cancer early, so I get to live and talk about it. I didn't go to the doctor because, well, I felt fine. I never got that simple PSA blood test, so they didn't detect my prostate cancer early. I had no chance to talk about it. I died. So it's up to you. Want to stick around and dance at your granddaughter's wedding? Have a catch with your grandkids? Or sit around and wish you did? Get a simple PSA blood test today. It'll save your life. It saved mine. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm John Sanders along with Curtis Aiken. Of course, tonight part of the 2K Sports Classic. It benefits coaches versus cancer, and it's really just the start. Both these teams will play four games in this preseason tournament as part of the battle against coaches versus cancer. But let's talk about the Big East. It's always fun, Curtis. I'm always amazed at how they pick these teams in the preseason. And it's Pittsburgh for the second time in the last five years picked first. Well, much deserving so. I mean, Jamie Dixon has done a great job, and it really starts with the leadership of this team, and it starts with him. Uh, obviously, Aston Gibbs is the leader on the floor. He has really elevated his game to new heights, and I think because of those two people, obviously you have other components to this team, but because of Jamie Dixon and Aston Gibbs, this team is ranked number one in the Big East, and deservingly so. Uh, you look at Georgetown, could be a sleeper there. That's a team that is led by a terrific player, Austin Freeman, one of the preseason players of the year, as is, as you mentioned, Gibbs there too. Let's look at the bottom part of the poll because I can't recall, Curtis, a time in recent memory where UConn's been down to number 10. Well, you know, Coach Calhoun, you know, he probably likes to lay in the, in the bottom of the, uh, the the lead in terms of being picked in preseason because we all know preseason is just that, preseason picks. And these coaches and players want to be, you know, obviously in the top of the echelon in terms of the Big East as well as the country at the end of the season. And I'll tell you what. This, this, the way this graphic looks today won't look like that at the end of the year. <laughs> I think there might be a few changes. Huh? No, no question. Well, they start the season with four teams from the Big East Conference ranked in the top 25. Pittsburgh is number four in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll, followed by Villanova. Then there's Syracuse and Georgetown. All those teams should be outstanding again this year. Well, certainly some familiar, familiar names as it relates to the teams, but they have some new players, some outstanding players, and this league does a great job of recruiting young talent, and we're going to see uh, quite a bit of that this year. Keep, keep an eye on Corey Fisher, who plays for Villanova. He Absolutely. is a terrific player. There are a lot of good ones in the Big East Conference. We've got some good ones on the court right now. When we come back, we'll have the opening half highlights and stats. So stay with us. More basketball coming up on ESPN3.com. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, when you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. Hail to pick. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. 
Hail to Discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to Excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Penn. Every Sunday night, the Comcast Network helps you make sense of the world around you. At 8, Robert Trenum brings you conversation and debate from the left, right, and center on Roll Call TV. At 8.30, tough questions, real answers. You choose who's right on It's Your Call with Lynn Doyle. At 9, entertaining and informative, Art Finnell reports. And at 9.30, join legendary reporter Larry Kane as he breaks down the world we know on Voice of Reason. Every Sunday night starting at 8 on the Comcast Network. Welcome back to the 2K Sports Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. And it's been all Panthers for the most part in the first half. They're up by 14. They've led by as many as 18. And Curtis, let's take a look at some highlights. As predicted, two guys very much in this picture, Wanamaker and Gibbs. Well, they certainly, uh, UIC knew that they were on the radar screen in terms of the, the uh, scouting report, but it didn't seem like it mattered because, as you see Wanamaker, he's been aggressive all day. And Ashton Gibbs, it, it's almost like, you know, invite us to the shoot around because that's what it's been today for Ashton Gibbs. It's almost like a shoot around and, you know, everything he put up went in. But when you get looks like that and you're a big time player like that, they're going to go in. Well, the answer has come from number 44. KC Robbins didn't start the game tonight, but when the other big man Williams got in foul trouble, he stepped up big time. Well, to UIC's credit, one of the most unlikely guys to carry the load offensively has it going tonight, so feed him, feed him, feed him until you can get all you can get out of him, John, because that's the only guy that has an answer for the Pitt Panthers. Look for Pitt Panthers to make a major adjustment the second half, and that's to pinch down on Robbins and make other guys beat him. Well, Robbins only two points away from matching his career high. His career best was 14 at 12 in the first half here tonight. And, of course, the guy that's missing is part of our star watch. We're talking about Robo Kreps, who did not very much offensively in that first half. Well, I thought, you know, Robo would at least start to warm up closer to the second half, but he did start to attack the basket a little better. But get to Pitt's credit, they had Brown on him. They switched a number of guys on him defensively. I thought it confused him. He never really got in the sink. Sink. Let's see if he can show up the second half. Well, there you see the difference between Gibbs and Kreps, the two guys that we focused on in our star watch. Another day at the office for Gibbs. We'll take another timeout. Coming back with the second half of Pitt and UIC after this on ESPN3.com. We love the movies, but Rob was always nervous about getting in. Now he's a new man. Thanks, Catherine, but... So tell him, Rob. Well, I've been using Fandango to print our tickets at home. You see, even when I think about it, I feel... Hot. Isn't he hot? Thank you, baby. I love it when he's assertive. Here you are, my friend. Dude, you are sizzling. Skip the box office. Print tickets at home and go straight to the ticket taker. That's what I'm talking about. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Penn. Victor Ray, this is Scorpion 23 traveling west on MSR Vernon. Four Victors, 16 packs. Request MSR status over. Roger, Scorpion 23. All MSRs and AOR red past 24 hours. Three IEDs on MSR Vernon. <laughs> He was there when his country needed him, and we'll be there when he needs his country. Join us and send your message of support to our wounded warriors and their families at USO.org. The USO, until everyone comes home.
are back getting ready for the second half of play here at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Our 2K Sports Classic benefiting coaches versus cancer, and so far primarily all Pittsburgh, although a little surge late in that opening half, led by KC Robbins. He has been the big man in more ways than one for UIC. The Panthers now ready to go for the second half. They'll go back to their original starting lineup of Brown, Zana, McGee, Gibbs, and Wanamaker. And, of course, it was Gilbert Brown, Curtis, that got him off and flying. Yeah, and, that, and we mentioned that early on. That, that, that's something that Jamie Dixon is looking for him to do as a leader. One of the leaders of this Pitt basketball team is be aggressive early, and he did tonight. And Robbins, the only change in the starting lineup, did not start tonight but he's in there to start the second half. Brown almost had the steal, and the Flames will keep the basketball. Well, you know, you talk about Brown. He's always aggressive on the defensive end. Coach Dixon liked to see him be more aggressive on the offensive end. I don't think he's going to have to ask him to do that much this year. He seemed to have made his mind up, but he's coming out to play aggressive. Wanamaker with the, the quick steal. Beats McGee has it blocked and fouled. Well, actually, I thought that was a pass to uh, the cutting Zana. But, uh, I believe he'd be going to the free throw line yes. for two. He will go to the line for a couple. You know, the Panthers were 3 of 15 shooting three-pointers in that tight game against Rhode Island on Monday when Rhode Island made 14 three-pointers. The Panthers in the first half tonight, 6 of 13. Well, John, I think the biggest difference between the Rhode Island game where the Panthers probably was contested on every jump shot that they took as opposed to tonight, it looks like a free-for-all in terms of free uh, Shots that are taken that are open three shots from the perimeter all over all night. One of two at the line for the 6'11 senior from Anderson, Indiana. But he has three points. But he is not expected to do the scoring, is he, Chris? It, it, he's not, but that's one area where he has improved his free throw shooting. His touch is much better than it was a year ago. Uh, but he can, you know, deliver in the paint. He's a good finisher when he just catches the ball with two hands. He's improved in that area for sure. Well, because of the play of Robbins, you see a lot of these production came from the bench for UIC in that opening 20 minutes. We're in the second half now. Another turnover. It's Wanamaker. They've got a four on one. And finishing it off is Gibbs for his 15th point. Well, you know, obviously there's a number of things that Coach Moore had to go over in the locker room to try to prepare his team for the second half, but they didn't anticipate them to come over, come out and turn the basketball over as they have the last few possessions. Krebs gets it back to a guy who had pretty good first half off the bench, and that's Barnes. He made two three-pointers. Carter from outside. That's an air ball. Tipped out of bounds, and the Panthers will keep it. It was deflected away by Daniel Barnes, so Pittsburgh will have it. And back to the bench now goes Brad Burton. Well, well, KC Robbins has certainly carried the load uh, for, for UCI, but if they have any shot, someone else is going to have to contribute in terms of point production. Wanamaker. Inside McGee, jump hook, bending, bending, bending off. Didn't get the roll, but nice solid move over the left shoulder. Carter had the rebound. Kreps with the basketball starts to drive, and they cut him off. Stays with it. Goes up and under. Well, I talked about someone else contributing in terms of point production. The most likely guy to do that is Kreps. He needs to really step his game up. 15-point Panther lead. 18-11 remaining here in the game. We're in the second half. For Pittsburgh, their second game in the 2K Sports Classic. Benefiting coaches versus cancer. They'll play two more games in Madison Square Garden next week. That's deflected, but kept alive by Wanamaker. Pulls up for a jumper and buries it. It's a two. Nice step back jump shot by Wanamaker. But the Pitt Panthers are really getting whatever they want. They're doing a great job of spreading the court and executing their offense. I love the way McGee jumps out and then recovers to go get his man. That's one of the, that's one of the Jamie Dixon trademarks for his big guys. They have to learn to come out and hedge and get back and defend the guy that you're checking. Well, he does it inside, but Robbins can't do it outside. Brown has the rebound. Well, his theory is, is when McGee's checking him, he's going to try to beat McGee on the perimeter. McGee's out of the game. He's going in the paint. Brown is fouled. 
<laughs> well, you know, first thing you're taught when you get a guy in the air like that is to try to get some contact and release the basketball for a shot. He goes right up there. He has a shot. First on Barnes. He catches the ball square. Got him in the air. If he goes up and shoots the ball, at least, at the very least, he's shooting two free throws. And Bonamaker with 13 points, eight assists, and four rebounds. So he has been every bit as good as Monday when he matched his career high with 24 points. Gibbs, the quick jumper is short and a foul called. One thing's for sure, you haven't seen the last of Wanamaker. He's a play. He's a player. You know, Aston Gibbs game is a little more different than Wanamaker. Aston Gibbs looks to score. Every time he gets the basketball, he's looking for an opportunity to put the ball in the basket. Warnermaker is the kind of guy that lets the ball game come to him. Comes to him, he, he tries to hurt you in a number of different areas. Passing, getting in the lane, great defender, and will knock down the open shot when given. But that was not always the case. He had a tendency in the past to drive too much, drive into traffic. He's kind of got past that. Yes, he has. One of two for Gibbs at the line. He's got 16 points to lead the scoring tonight. Wanamaker right with him with 13 points. It's a tough combination for anybody, and the Panthers lead it 49 to 31. They've matched their biggest lead of the evening. Carter on a drive. Stepped out of bounds. Swarming defense. I mean, the Pitt Panthers, just the little things that they do. One of the things that Coach Dixon puts a lot of emphasis on is not letting guys get clean catches. Just on passes. I mean, a lot of people don't pay that attention pay too much attention to that but if you allow a team to get clean passes they can make things happen they can really hurt you now UIC three turnovers in six possessions on the second half Gibbs is off target the Panthers have the offensive rebound Wanamaker is though his pass hits the side of the backboard Kreps stop and go move feeds it to the corner deflected by Gibbs out of bounds when Kreps had his opportunity, he could pull it up and shot a little eight-footer and try to do a little too much off the bounce. You're not going to be able to beat a taller 6'6 guy like Brown off the dribble. Taylor checks back into the lineup for Pittsburgh. Also back in is number 21, Lamar Patterson. Zana will go to the bench along with McGee. We talked about Nasir Robinson with his ankle injury and the fact that he's not... Uh, in the lineup and it's not going to play for a while yet they're not sure when he's going to be back but even though he was a starter much of last year they have not missed very much yeah well started 34 games last year all the games <laughs> that they played he actually started but he's a guy that can you call him a garbage man he gives you all the in, he has all the intangibles he does all the little things to help his team win here's brown back to wanamaker and one such such strong upper body. I mean, very, very strong as upper body. It'll take us to another timeout. The Panthers on a roll at home, now up by 20, their largest lead of the night. Everybody is contributing for the Panthers here at Pittsburgh. I'm Ed Randall. I'm a survivor of prostate cancer. I'm the ghost of Ed Randall. I'm a victim of prostate cancer. I went to the doctor for my normal visit. I felt fine and got a simple PSA blood test. Because of that, they caught my prostate cancer early, so I get to live and talk about it. I didn't go to the doctor because, well, I felt fine. I never got that simple PSA blood test, so they didn't detect my prostate cancer early. I had no chance to talk about it. I died. So it's up to you. Want to stick around and dance at your granddaughter's wedding? Have a catch with your grandkids? Or sit around and wish you did? Get a simple PSA blood test today. It'll save your life. It saved mine. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best. When you can learn from those who came before you. You can reach new heights. Heyo, it's a 
pick. Welcome back, 51-21. Panthers have their biggest lead of the night with 15-50 remaining. Coach Brandon Knight, one of the great point guards in Pitt history. Giving Gilbert Brown a little uh, advice. And uh, he is, Brandon has done a little bit of everything since coming back to his alma mater. He, he really has. Video hasn't. coordinator. <laughs> now he's an assistant coach in what, his third year as an assistant? Well, that he, is not, of course, uh, Brandon Knight. That's Pat Sandel, that's who's him. in his eighth year. So Wanamaker has matched Gibbs total with 16 points tonight. Panthers fall back into a straight up man to man defense. Don't anticipate that they would deviate from that tonight. A little too strong that time by Carter who expected some contact didn't really get it. Well, the Panthers have the basketball back leading by 21 points. Panthers run a what's called a flex offense. Just look at the spacing that they get to create opportunities. Wow. Like that. Brown on a drive, scoops and scores. The basket will count, and he'll go to the line. When you have skilled swing men like that, it's very difficult to guard them when you create a one-on-one -on -one situation as you saw there. Great fake by Gilbert Brown, an excellent finish. Well, he is the third Panther in double figures. He, is, he hits 11. <laughs> I There's like the lean-in foul. That's number four on Darren Williams. Three-point play the old-fashioned way, John. 55-31. Panthers really beginning to pull away now, Curtis, and show their superiority. There's a nice drive and a good finish by Neely. It's his first basket of the night. Clearly missed assignment on that. You won't see many guys go by Wanamaker that easy. Patterson, Brown, Wanamaker, Gibbs all on the court. A jump hook by Taylor, the fifth member of that crew right now. I like it. The position that he was on the floor called for him to fade away. But one of the things he has to start to look to do more, and that is attack the basket and not fade away so much. A rare miss inside by the big man. The ball out of bounds. And the Panthers will bring in a couple of subs as J.J. Moore will check in along with Trevon Woodall. Well, let's see if IUC look to go inside to K.C. Robin considering that McGee is on the bench. Kreps from outside. That's too strong and he just has not had that shooting touch tonight. It will still be Flames basketball. UIC will keep it. 14-24 remaining here in the second half. Opening game of the season, first ever for their new head coach, Howard Moore, for the Panthers. That's a it tough is. draw. That <laughs> is a tough draw. And the Panthers in their second game of the young season, they played the very first college basketball game in the country on Monday. Knocked away and knocked out of bounds. The Panthers right back in action against North Florida here at the Peterson Center on Saturday afternoon. That game starts about 4 o'clock. And then they'll go to New York, take on Maryland, and then either Texas or Illinois. Carter working hard and throws up an air ball. Well, Patterson did a good job, great position. Looks like he frustrated Carter into a bad shot. Three-pointer is going to be short. Kreps has the rebound. Back come the Flames. That's a three on the way and buried that time off the bench by Matt Bush, the redshirt junior from Quincy, Illinois. Quick shot off the fast break. On a drive and a blocking foul called against the Flames. That'll be the third on Neely. Talk about the, the, the versatility of Wanamaker. Nice explosive move to the basket. Really improved his first step. Now you saw Neely try to sneak in there, Curtis, but he didn't make it. A little late. <laughs> a 
Brad, after getting 24 on Monday, already has 17 tonight. So his season is off to a very fast start. Very fast start, 17 points. But you know what? He let the game come to him. Solid basketball player, doesn't force things. Very consistent. Whoa. What about that follow by Taylor? Well, nice effort by Dante Taylor. I think he got away with a little goaltending there, but. Was offensive goaltending, but no call. He just jammed it back home. I guess the consensus was if you're going to go that hard and that aggressive, let him go with it. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, the officials, for the most part, have let him play. Yes, they have. Unlike the Rhode Island game. Preps at the foul line. Wanamaker will draw the foul. His first, Kreps will get a chance from the foul line. 60-36 is our score. That is just the first team foul on Pittsburgh here in the second half. Kreps, who was one of two at the line in the first half, from Forsyth, Illinois. There is their new head coach, Howard Moore. He likes his kids. In fact, he grew up just a few blocks from the building where they play. Well, you know, that's a, that's a dream job, right? I'm sure as a kid, he thought about someday playing there, and uh, obviously he went to Wisconsin, now he had an opportunity to go back and coach there. So, love to see that. Moore, no place to go. Back to Patterson. They work the perimeter. Shot clock at 10. That hasn't been a problem tonight for either team. Moore hesitates and misses the shot. What was the little double clutch there, Curtis? Yeah, well, uh, he had to do that to get it off. Otherwise, <laughs> it was going to get blocked. Great defensive position. I don't think Jamie Dixon liked that shot too much. <laughs> Pretty good battle going on inside. Let's see if this goes against the Panthers. It will. Yes. It'll be the second on Woodall. And Wanamaker will get a blow now. As he heads to the bench. One of the fan favorites. But you put Gibbs back in so you don't lose a heck of a lot, do you? Not at all. You keep them coming. Pull up jumper, good. Just the second field goal for Zevian Neely. Better known as Z on this team. And working it up is Woodall. And Neely is only 6'1 at 177 pounds, but he's doing a good job of getting into the lane. He's got an offensive foul called on Dante Taylor. That is his first. The lead is 20 for the Panthers. We're just inside 12 minutes left in the game. This is the start of our coverage here on ESPN3.com. Stay with us. Back to Pittsburgh right after this. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Penn. Every Sunday night, the Comcast Network helps you make sense of the world around you. At 8, Robert Trenum brings you conversation and debate from the left, right, and center on Roll Call TV at 8.30. Tough questions, real answers. You choose who's right on It's Your Call with Lynn Doyle. At 9, entertaining and informative, Art Finnell reports. And at 9.30, join legendary reporter Larry Kane as he breaks down the world we know on Voice of Reason. Every Sunday night starting at 8 on the Comcast Network. Just over eight minutes into this second half, and it's all Pittsburgh. They led by 14 at intermission, up by 20 now, and they have done the job. Thanks to two guys. One wears 22, and the other one wears number 12. Well, they're going to be the one-two punch for the Pitt Panthers and create havoc for other teams all year long. They complement each other so well. Defensively, they help each other. Offensively, they're one-two punch. They can give it to you So from so many different directions and angles that it's very hard to, to defend, as you see, Ashton with 16 tonight. 
and Wanamaker with, with seven, but more importantly and more impressively, nine assists for Wanamaker. And Wanamaker coming off an eight assist, 24 point game on Monday. Back at it again tonight. 20 point lead for Pittsburgh. Bad pass inside. Well, KC has done it all for the night, but uh, I don't envision him at 6'11", 278 pounds being a very good passer. <laughs> well, he had 12 points in the first half, and he's the reason it was only a 14-point <laughs> deficit You're right. at halftime. A quick turnaround. It comes up short. Taylor battles for the rebound, and finally, it's going to be a traveling violation on Paul Carter. Thing that Paul Carter, maybe he's tried too hard tonight with his family on hand. Yeah, he has, and uh, you, know, you can tell he has the talent and the skills. And I think you bring up a great point, John. Sometimes you know when you when you have that kind of uh, passion for the game, and you, you get your family and friends in in, uh, in in the location to see you play, you sometimes you give it a little too much. That's going to be an offensive foul on J.J. Moore, his second personal. And right now back in the lineup Robbins gets a blow for the Flames and Darren Williams who has four fouls is the only player really in big foul trouble in this game 20 point lead for Pittsburgh the Carter was just with the ball that kind of forced it pass but you know to his defense he's not going to see guys like Gilbert Brown in the Horizon Conference going up against a night in and night out so tough night for him Kreps dumps it down to Williams Backs in, turns around, comes up short. Taylor had a piece of it. And the Panthers with Woodall will have a four on two. There's the finish on the right side by Moore. When the numbers are even, when the, when the Panthers are attacking on a fast break and the numbers are even, they usually come ahead. But if they have the numbers, as you mentioned, four on two, you might as well count it because they always make the right decision with the basketball. The problem on Monday, especially in the first half, was they missed a bunch of layups. <laughs> yes. Jamie Dixon said, uh, what'd you do at halftime? Well, we had a layup drill. <laughs> I mean, they really, I saw that game. They missed some point blank lay layups that was unimaginable, but they got it together the second half. First basket of the night for Williams, who's played with foul trouble all throughout the evening. Back to a 20 point difference. Well, with 10 minutes to go in the ball game, and down 20, I would think that uh, he would go the rest of the way. This, this is just too easy, too easy. A good drive that time by J.J. Moore, but he couldn't finish. One, one of my favorite players there. He's young, but uh, he's going to be a good one. Carter with a miss. Here is Travon Woodall. Gibbs for three. He got it. That's his fourth three-pointer, and it gives him 19 on the game. Well, I looked over at the bench at Coach Moore when Ashton Gibbs knocked that down. He just walked away and shook his head. Not that he's given up, just a little frustrated. 65-42 Pittsburgh. Panthers have never trailed tonight. It was tied 2-2 early on. And look at the difference. Pittsburgh had only three out of 15 three-pointers on Monday, but they have answered with seven of 18 tonight. And if they do that, Curtis, then they're going to be big trouble for any opponent. There's no question about it. And, uh, you know, they have three guys that can really stick the jump shot from anywhere on the court. So uh, it's going to be difficult for teams to defend that. 9-11 to play here on ESPN3.com. The Panthers, number four in the country, in control. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, when you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. Hail to pick. Life, an everyday miracle of survival. Today, the future of all life on Earth hangs in the balance. What happens next depends on us. Open up your mind and see like me. Open up your plans and damn you're free. I look into your heart and you will find love, 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 love. Listen to the music of the moment people dance 
This is the 2K Sports Classic, benefiting coaches versus cancer. Panthers playing their second of four games in that preseason tournament. And the head coach, the brand new head coach, many years an assistant at Wisconsin, and he brings that kind of mentality to his new job here at UIC. Well, we talked about, you know, him having a tough draw tonight playing against the number four team in the country. But, you know, I see I see some good things in this team. Obviously, they're struggling because the Pitt Panthers are just such more of a superior team in height and size and talent. But uh, I see the toughness. I see that these kids, you know, have some ability. Just outmatched tonight. You can see a good look at Coach Moore. He's very happy with the makeup of his team. Physically, of course, they're not of the same caliber as what he had as an assistant in Wisconsin, but he'll make the adjustment and, and recruit bigger, more talented players, and uh, I look for them to be very competitive in their conference. Krebs tries to give it back that time to Williams, couldn't do it. So here come the Panthers again, give stop and go move, bounces off Krebs and hits the shot. It's just, it's just that easy. 21 for Gibbs. It, it, it's uh, very easy. <laughs> Biggest lead of the night. Blocked by McGee. And he chases it down. Well, here come the Panthers. Gibbs. Woodall to finish. Nice look away pass by Gibbs. Solid finish by Woodall. The lead grows to 27 with 8.20 remaining. Kreps from outside misses a three. Flames had it momentarily, but lost it out of bounds. I think it kicked off the foot of Burton, and so it'll be Pittsburgh basketball. A lot of turnovers in the second half for the Flames. I'm John Sanders, along with former Pitt great Curtis Aiken. Happy to have you with us on ESPN3.com tonight. This one of about a thousand plus telecasts that we'll have over 4,000 live events on ESPN3.com. Some great games on. ESPN3.com as we took a look at some of them earlier, John. There's going to be some uh, big-time games on the network. Here's Gibbs in the lane. Gibbs it up. Zana with his first basket off a beautiful feed. 71-42. Right now on a 9-0 Panther run. It's their second 9-0 run of the game. Well, they had a 7-0 run when the game was tied at 2. And they really haven't looked back since. Oh, good job of fighting his way. You look like a ball carrier that time. <laughs> well, he, he split the seam, so to speak. Uh, Aston Gibbs gambled and came up a little short. Go, 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 of course, Jamie Dixon has not stopped coaching, even though they're up by a bunch. Uh, no, not at all. He likes to see his team execute to perfection and how about another three for Gibbs. Gibbs. Shooting lights out. That's his fifth three-pointer. He's one away from a career high. Well, with 635 to go in the ball game, he's very capable of getting it. Kreps inside and it's blocked by Zana. And that's what Zana gives you, that athleticism. What all with penetration? And fouled on the way in. It'll take us to another timeout. Ashton doing a good job of setting up Zana for the finish. So easy.
get movies at your fingertips with our new iPhone app. Download now from Apple's App Store or on iTunes. Three Rhodes Scholars in the past five years. Hail to knowledge. Top five ranking in biomedical research. Hail to discovery. One of America's strongest public research universities. Hail to excellence. Home to happy students. Hail to Penn. We welcome you back to the Peterson Event Center. It's a 30 point Panther lead. This is a team that's had great success in their new building. 133 and 11. The only non conference loss they've ever had came a couple years back to Bucknell. And a brand new addition playing well also is Zana. Well, Zana, he gives it to you. Uh, a few moments ago, he did a great job of blocking a shot on one end, and on this end, he finishes. As you see, Ashton Gibbs set him up with a nice pass. There's the block that I spoke about earlier, and uh, does a good job of filling the lanes as well. And Tony Salisi, he's only been the trainer here for a couple of years, huh? <laughs> well, standing in front of the bench. I remember that guy taping my ankles. He's been a fixture here at the University of Pittsburgh. Great guy. Does a great job. He, he really does. Zana with five rebounds, just a couple of points. Yeah. Woodall got the roll on both. So seven points for the native of Patterson, New Jersey. Points off turnovers tonight. The Panthers have 16 points off turnovers. Check out our stat track. Shooting percentage over 50% for Pitt. Well, nice surprised. drive. That one won't go, though. Bounces out into the hands of McGee. Here is Patterson. Six minutes remaining in the game. Good feed to McGee. Good feed and excellent finish. One of the areas that McGee has really improved in, John, is, is catching the basketball. You know, a year or two ago, he would fumble that thing, and when he finally got a hold of it, you know, he was out of position. Very, very much improved in terms of catching the basketball and finishing, as you saw in the last play. Well, Neely keeps driving for UIC, but he has not been able to finish. Big run for the Panthers of 16 to 2. That's why they've opened it up by 34 with five and a half minutes to go. And everybody has contributed as Brown will check back in. Remember at the start of the game, it was Brown that got him off and rolling to that 7 0 run that started this thing. Well, that's what your, 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 your senior leadership should do for you. Get set the tempo early, and he did. Patterson outside, inside McGee, backs his way in, rips it up, and good. Nice solid move, good execution offensively, ran a 1-4 high, sent everybody up. With the exception of McGee, created an ISO, nice finish. Well, if you're Howard Moore of the UIC, there isn't a heck of a lot you can do. No, no. I, one thing I am surprised, though, is that they didn't at least fall back into a 2-3 zone. Uh, because this man to man is oh, what, nothing. what a catch and a finish three baskets in a row for McGee. He is threatening to join the group in double figures. Certainly have to appreciate how aggressive McGee is running the floor and finishing on the fast breaks. The lead at halftime was 14 and the Panthers have really put it away here in the second half. That's Corey Gray working his way back outside. Shot clock is inside 10. The harder fights it up. <laughs> and he was bailed out that time by McGee. Well, you don't anticipate McGee, you know, at 6'11, 35 feet from the basket, following the jump shooter. <laughs> That's one thing that gives the coaches gray hair. And McGee with nine points and eight rebounds. To mention this 2K Sports Classic will continue for the University of Illinois at Chicago in Toledo. They'll play Toledo on the 19th, College of Charleston on the 20th, and Rhode Island 
on the 21st. That's a team that Pittsburgh just barely defeated. Very, very good team. A lot of weapons. First point of the second half for Paul Carter. McGee goes to the bench. Good work for tonight. Carter has not been able to find his mark at all this evening. Well, Ashton Gibbs with 24 points tonight, seven assists, eight of 14 shooting, and five three-pointers. That's the kind of night he's had. Well, I anticipate that he would have many more nights like that. He's really done a good job of working on his overall game over the summer. Much improved. 82-46, Panthers at the four-minute mark. We're in the second half here on ESPN3.com. Glad you could join us. More to come this week, including a men's and women's doubleheader from Morgantown. It'll be on Friday. Three-pointer from straight away is good by Patterson. What, actually, one of the better jump shooters on the team. 6'5", you know, doesn't look like he has a frame to be much of a jump shooter, but he squares up and knocks it down extremely well. Well, he's opened it up to a huge lead of 39 points, 3.41 to go. It's all Pittsburgh here on the 2K Sports Classic. I'm Ed Randall. I'm a survivor of prostate cancer. I'm the ghost of Ed Randall. I'm a victim of prostate cancer. I went to the doctor for my normal visit. I felt fine and got a simple PSA blood test. Because of that, they caught my prostate cancer early, so I get to live and talk about it. I didn't go to the doctor because, well, I felt fine. I never got that simple PSA blood test, so they didn't detect my prostate cancer early. I had no chance to talk about it. I died. So it's up to you. Want to stick around and dance at your granddaughter's wedding? Have a catch with your grandkids? Or sit around and wish you did? Get a simple PSA blood test today. It'll save your life. It saved mine. When you build on a strong foundation, when you are among the brightest and the best, When you can learn from those who came before you, you can reach new heights. Hail to pick. 3.41 to go. We've talked a lot about the guys outside, but of late for Pittsburgh, it's been the guy inside. Well, McGee has certainly got it done for the Pitt Panthers. Nine points, eight rebounds. Uh, certainly could have had a double-double if he played more minutes tonight, but John, you talked about earlier in the show, Wanamaker being one of the most improved players on this Pitt basketball team, but we also have to throw McGee in that mix as well. Uh, what great success they have had in this building. McGee sitting with nine points, eight rebounds. Panthers continue to dominate non-conference opponents in this building. A little ticky-tack bomb on J.J. Richardson. Here's what we're talking about, 48 in a row, 97 of 98 against non-conference teams. And in this building, 76 and one. The only team to beat him was Bucknell. Unbelievable. Well, Bucknell went on to the NCAA tournament that year, too. I actually saw that game. What an outstanding game. It's some great talent on that team. Uh, that Bucknell team and uh, again that, that's unbelievable to have that kind of record and defend your home court like that certainly one of the tops in the country good move inside that time and a nice finish by Tyler as coach Moore begins to empty his bench Panthers in complete control 85 to 48 and this is one of the most important parts of the game for Jamie Dixon is how you close out the game regardless of what how many points you're up you want to finish crisp, sharp on your game. Stripped down the middle, the turnover. Now the Panthers scramble to get it back. It's still loose. Well, that, that's not exactly crisp and sharp, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's going to be pit basketball. They'll get it back as Taylor returns to the lineup. 
Checking back in for the Flames is Matt Bush. Well, my point is there is no garbage time with Jamie Dixon. He doesn't believe in, you know, because you're up uh, 20 or down 20, just get in the game and start jacking up shots and not stay in the flow of their offense and, and their overall scheme. So he's very disciplined in that respect. From the corner, that's a three. So another player in double figures as Woodall hits the three. That's his second, and he's got 10. 88-48. As the zoo behind the screens for the uh, reserve players about to check into the game. Haven't heard much from the zoo tonight, but it has been much to cheer about, right? There hasn't been anything to complain about, that's no, for sure. No, not at all. A drive and a block. Paul is knocked out of bounds. A combination that time of Woodall and Richardson with the block. Brown will go to the bench. The Panthers will send in Nguomo. And who else is coming in? Nguomo checks in. Great recovery, and uh, Taylor did a good job of coming over to help out as well. well Brown sits with 12.6 rebounds. And a nice play worked underneath and a good finish by Bush. Jay Diggs kind of got lawed to sleep on that play. This is Nick Rivers with the basketball. He drives down the lane and almost turned it over, but it was kicked out of bounds by UIC. So the Panthers will get it back. Now Aqua has checked in a freshman from Baltimore. Rivers is a walk on. These guys do a lot of work in practice, Curtis. This is their chance to shine a little bit. The three-pointer by Moore. I talked about it earlier. J.J. Moore is a guy that can give it to you in so many different ways offensively. As you see him hustle on defense. Great athleticism. Well, he got the steal, drew the foul. He was able to finish over the top. Well, he could join that group in double figures if he hits the free throw. Well, he knocks down a three-point shot and then comes back on a defensive end, gets his hands in, and was able to control himself and finish on the offensive end. Great play by J.J. Moore. Deepan Jat Singh has checked in as they empty their bench. That's Armand Rasul. And I think you'll know who Zing is because of the hat he wears. Yeah. He wears it all the time. Where's it in practice? Nope. Looking for his 10th point. Didn't get it, but the Panthers get it back. Nwakwo with a miss. And they throw it away. Jamie Dixon, not very good hands on that one. <laughs> he never expected one of his players would throw a pass that poorly. <laughs> <laughs> it's his birthday, by the way. He's 45 years old. And he's accomplished a lot in his young age, I should say. And now the zoo breaks into a little happy birthday rendition as Singh hits the basket. <laughs> His work isn't done with the minute to go in the ball game. He's still coaching. The drive and the foul. Richardson will get the basket. The basket will count. You know, I was here for the shoot around, Curtis, and his expression has not changed since practice this afternoon. Focus. I haven't seen him focus, smile yet. Focus. <laughs> get one, man. Get one. Well, he has to be pleased with the way his. Uh, Pitt Panther basketball teams have been playing uh, this early season. Well, they have been tested pretty good. Rhode Island was not an easy one. They allowed 14 three-pointers. Final minute. All Pittsburgh, 95-52. You know, the zoo wanted 100, but I don't think they're going to get it. Not tonight. Might have gotten away with a walk there, missed the shot. <laughs> well, he made us. He may have spoke too soon, John. He knocks this down. They're only two points away from 100. Well, Taylor tried to fight it back up with the rebound, and he'll go to the foul line. No, check it. It's knocked out of bounds. Pit basketball, no foul. 
It was 43-29 at halftime. Taylor steps through. <laughs> His own shot. He's got nine. Wow. That was impressive. That was impressive. I mean, how can you get up so quick? You just missed a shot. You have to land, and then you get up so fast to beat the defender up in the air to dunk it through. Outstanding play. Now Richardson had it, lost it, and Tyler winds up with his second basket off the bench. Final 10 seconds, and they're going to call it off right here. Nick Rivers will simply walk it up to midcourt, and the faithful, another sellout, will head home. Well, the Panthers' record in this building goes to 134 and 11. Curtis, they were never in trouble tonight. No, I mean, the Pitt Panthers did exactly what they came out here to do tonight. They executed their offense. They got the ball in the right hands, and I think Brown set the tempo by attacking early. 97-54 is the final score. The Panthers rolling to victory behind some great shooting. Offense, Gibbs with 24, Wanamaker with 17. Brown had a dozen. Woodall had 10. Everybody contributed. For Curtis Aiken and our entire ESPN3.com crew, I'm John Sanders. We say so long tonight from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Again, the final. The Panthers win it 97 to 45. For an archived copy of this entire game, as well as other games on our family of ESPN Network, log on to ESPN3.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everyone. Due to the length of tonight's game, we now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. Woody Simon. Here's Udall's third round score. He is at a 95 well in first place. He's pulling away right now, but there still is one guy who can keep him out of that number one spot. But he's got to really reach into that bag of tricks and pull out the best jump of his entire day right now. Knowing Simon Dumont, knowing his commitment to victory, his commitment to sport, this is where he thrives. The top is where he lives. Here he is, give it up for Simon Dumont! Dumont's run, but will the judges? Yes, but not enough. Dumont in second, behind Olsen, skiing at Icer Air 2007 has a champion. Stay on board for the action right here on Planet X. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronics Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronics Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If, if you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget. And my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. When we bought flooring for this room, we got flooring for this room free. And this room was free too. 
Right now, buy flooring for one room and get two rooms free from Empire. We offer quality flooring and you get to shop at home. Plus, get installation by the holidays guaranteed or it's free. With no interest for one year. Buy one, get two rooms free. Call Empire today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today. Tomorrow on The Report, we'll take a look at Jewish American history. We'll look at the struggles throughout their history, the triumphs, and we'll look at the contributions to our society. On the next Dark Pinnell Reports, tomorrow at 5.30 on the Comcast Network. Friday night at 7, the Comcast Network kicks off this year's college basketball action with a hardwood matchup between the Hoyas and Monarchs. Don't miss Georgetown versus Old Dominion. Friday night at 7, right here on the Comcast Network. You guys ready for the award? Let's do snowboarding first. In third place, Chad Gudemann! And in second place, who do we got here? We got Tim Humphrey! Your 2007 Insurance Icer Air Champion right here! Your hands together for the man, Travis Rice! And now it is time to award the Sears in third place. Give it up for him right here. It's Sammy Carlton! And in second place. Let's give it up for him right here. It's Simon Dumont, the E-Shirts Ice Rare 2007 champion for skiing big air. Put your hands together for you. Oh, All you guys, give yourself a round of applause for supporting Sure, the music is coming up next. Even with the position is critical, all the living is principle, your position is Stay on board for the action right here on Planet X. Do you smoke? Smoking's dirty, disgusting, but most of all, it's deadly. According to the British Medical Journal, smoking one cigarette takes 11 minutes off your life. Tens of thousands of smokers have their lives back with all-natural final smoke, and you can too. I smoked a pack a day for about 25 years. In my doctor's had told me you either quit smoking or you will die. Don't waste time with gums and patches. When I tried to quit in the past without final smoke, I constantly craved cigarettes. All natural final smoke will help you address the cravings and addictions without nicotine. Right away, I noticed like I had absolutely no cravings. The final smoke took all of all of them completely away. Final Smoke guarantees you'll be smoke free and completely satisfied or your money back. If you are ready to quit, Final smoke is the answer. I took my final smoke. Don't let smoking shorten your life. We're so confident you'll quit with final smoke. We'll let you try it before billing you. Tens of thousands have used it. It's all natural, fast and easy, guaranteed. Attorneys have to make some tough choices, but there's one that's easy. 
Oasis Legal Finance is the number one choice to provide clients the money they need for bills and living expenses long before their case may settle. Oasis has prepaid millions of dollars to people just like you with no obligation to repay if you lose your case. I need my settlement money now, but the defendant keeps delaying the court date. After my accident, I wasn't able to work, but my attorney told me about Oasis, and they had a check to me in two days. If you're involved in a lawsuit, call Oasis Legal Finance. Get the money you deserve. Call Oasis. Call Oasis. Whether it's money for bills, rent, car payment, or groceries, call Oasis now. Remember, the phone call is free, the application is free, and there's no obligation to repay if you lose your case. Call Oasis now. The insurance Icer Air steps out in Crocs. Crocs. Play hard. Live comfortably. The insurance Icer Air is proud to be supported by Full Throttle. Prepare to let your man out. I will add the, the, the pants that you're wearing right now. I, I want to, I just, can I just, may I? Man. And we got a new guest. Hey, what's up, man? Tell her, off the mother. Where? off the mother. Damn. I don't even know what that means, but I like it. I'm single, okay? I want him. We're going to keep doing it all day, baby. You're sexy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Supernatural grabs the mic and then I bust them. You have just watched another boombox production. Word. I claim this world in the name of Planet X. Hi, everyone. I'm Larry Kane, and you are watching the Comcast Network. Get your golf fix. Join Chick Hernandez for this special series featuring a day on the links with your favorite stars. Catch Tea Time, Sunday at 9.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Tea Time is presented by GEICO.